Oh, we are on, yes. 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 Right, see how long it takes for this to come. <laughs> Our device is beside us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there'll be a few people tonight. I know that there's going to be right. some people might be affected by the weather. I'm on. Good. Just now. Gordon Smith. You there? Hello, Gordon. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yep. There uh, certainly seem to be thunderstorms covering a good area of the country tonight. Yep. Thankfully, they've missed us. <laughs> Wooden table. Um, yeah. Thankfully, they seem to have missed us. Um, but I think it might well affect a few people um, over the, the course of the evening. Okay. Oh, that's time. Yes. I want it bigger than that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I've got quite a few watching with us. It's not giving me the number here, but. Oh. Not yet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. We're getting there. Yes. Oh, it's not giving me a number up. Oh, yes, it is now. It is. <laughs> it is. We're starting to get there. There's a few people joining us. Yeah. From all over. Um, yep, say so Gordon, Betty. Drew. In Rosneath. Drew in Thailand. Betty in Rosneath. Diane, East Kilbride, yeah. or are you still away? Um, have you been away? Margaret McMillan in Dumfries. Hello. Okay, there's a few people yeah. able to join. And Debbie. Debbie. Now, Debbie, it looks like you keep the same kind of dogs as Gordon. Yes. Yes. Does. Just judging from the, the pictures. Yes. If you can both see the comments, have a look and see. I did make a comment last last week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that um, Gordon's very proud of his dog. Certainly. <laughs> yes. Certainly is. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> I hope that's not a picture of you, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Here's me. It's a Japanese spitz that Debbie's got. Okay. Which is different from what Gordon's got. It is indeed. <laughs> yes. Need to get a bigger picture. Absolutely. <laughs> well, yes. some announcements. Yes, uh, you can have your cup of tea anytime you like. Um, or coffee. Or coffee, or a glass cold of water. Drink. Yeah. Might need a cold drink. Some it, has cool, it, has, very, yeah, very it has cooled down here a, a good bit, hasn't it? It has, but it's still warm. It's still quite for warm. us. Yeah, and but we are enjoying being back in the yes. cooler, <laughs> cooler weather. Um, this week, what have we got on this week? Tuesday night, the home league are going out for dinner. It's the last Ooh. home league of the this this part of the year. Probably back after the summer. We've got food bank on. Wednesday and Friday. Uh, we care. Last one for the sum before the summer um, on Wednesday at quarter to one. And I think we've got Song Session Band on Wednesday night. We do. Next Sunday morning, half past ten in person worship at the Salvation Army in Vernes. And then we'll be on here again at six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yes. I think that's all the announcements. How long is it since we did Songs of Praise? Quite a few weeks. Is it time for another one? I think it's time for another Songs of Praise. So we'll have a Songs of Praise Let's next have Sunday a Songs night. of Praise next Sunday night. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. if you would let us know in the comments what your favourite songs are that you'd that like us really to good. do our yeah. best singing and hopefully we'll have voices. <laughs> Maybe. If not, just sing loudly at home yeah. and turn the volume down on us when we're singing. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if anybody does that. Auto-generated captions here. Yeah, well, I don't have any, but you have I do, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, songs of praise, you all know what to do in the comments. Just let us know. Um, and um, as our list gets full, we will let you know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shall we start this Let's evening? Start this evening. Okay, the first one is not in the songbook. No. Just a closer walk with the. Hopefully, most people will know this. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, oh. keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk close to, as I walk, dear Lord, close to thee. Walk close to thee. 
Let's just share in prayer. Father God, again this evening we just thank you that we are able to meet in this way. Lord, we thank you for all the people who are tuning in, eh, those who are tuning live, those perhaps who will catch up later on. We pray, Lord, that um, as we share together in worship, that you will join us all together in your love. Lord, as we've just sung, we have that closer walk with you. And um, as we live our lives day by day, we know that you walk beside us. Whatever situation we might find ourselves in, whatever um, things are bothering us, we know, Lord, that you are there and you walk close beside us. And we thank you for that. This evening, Lord, we just pray that as we share together, that we might um, be blessed through the singing, that we might be challenged through your word as we open your word, that you'll challenge us to think again about the love that you have for each one of us. And so, Father, just be with us in all we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> the next song is one that's been chosen for next week already, but that's fine, that's okay. <laughs> song number 318. <laughs> Come Holy Spirit, thou guest of the soul, make thine abode in me, bring in the calm thy sweet presence bestows, let me thy temple be. Come to my heart today, rekindle the glow and the glory bestow, come to my heart today. Bit of a practice. Yes. <laughs> 
to share with you um, two weeks ago it'll be now uh, that you were in our worship and um, we are glad that you had a lovely time in Scotland we're glad that you're safely home and we eagerly await your next visit because I know that you want to come back but we miss you too and just a reminder to those who may have missed at the beginning songs of praise next week we do have one or two um, com- a requests coming in in the comments so please yes. if you want a song next week We'll do our best to do it um, and just put it in the comments and that would be great. Thank you very much. And that was my practice for next week. That's your practice for next week, yeah. Okay. Well, we've been away. Um, obviously, last week was uh, pre-recorded. We were away in London uh, at the Brengel Institute. We're very privileged to be able to go to that. Yes. For the second time. Yes. For both of us. Yes. We went individually the last time. We did. But I think we benefited from being together this time. It's quite good, quite a, an okay experience. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So what are your highlights? Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, uh, my highlight was just having quiet space. Mm. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> now, don't all laugh at this, because those of you who know me really well... We had a silent hour every day. Pause for them to have a laugh. Pause for you to have a laugh. Yes. Yeah, a silent (laughs) hour every day. Where um, it it was a time for to reflect and to read. And um, I do have a book that I am currently reading. I found another book up the stair, actually. Um, The one that Mel Jones was talking about. And I think I might just start reading that one too. The Contentious Doctrine. Okay. That's quite a hard read, I think. Um, but I'm, I'm reading a book, um, Jesus, A Pilgrimage. Um, and it's it's in preparation for going to Israel next year. Um, we we had this hour, hour to spend reading. And I did read, but I fell asleep as well. <laughs> um, a bit of meditating, maybe. And a bit of, um, yeah, it was uh-huh. very good. Yeah, so... It was to have the space just to be quiet before God. Yeah. Hopefully that's the blips over for tonight. I hope because so. normally we get a blip oh. pretty early on. Yeah. And uh, that's another one. Yeah. Then things tend to settle down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed being able to go. One of the real highlights for me is 
when we get to sit and we have moments of grace. Um, we share when God's been very, very close to us. Um, and understanding that each, it was almost a testimony time but for each of the officers who were there. And there were 30 of us um, and all of us were given the opportunity to officially talk for eight minutes. I think some were much more than eight minutes. Um, because the, the, the things that we've been through have been so, so uh, important in, in our lives. Yeah. And the fact that we are given the opportunity then to, to just say how God actually has come in and helped us at the end of that. It was worth listening to all of, all of those um, moments of grace where God really had spoken to people. Yeah. Anything else that's um, spoken to you? been a special highlight meeting up with friends oh yeah i know because that was yeah, well, okay. you, you yeah. we had friends who were at, at yeah then go didn't we we did we had two of our session mates there uh, denise wise and david woodman and um, and it was lovely to to spend time with them to catch up denise we have seen on and off but I don't think, I think it's a long time We've since we've seen David. David. And it was lovely to catch up with him and also to make new friends. People that we'd known in our officership and then other people that we didn't know. Um, and it was good just to to um, share with them and get to know them and make new friends. That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did get one day off. So we I'm did. going to jump in now. And... You have that because I... Yes. Um, and on that day off, I'd arranged to meet my cousin Alexander, who goes to Chelmsford Corps, and to meet his mum, um, my aunt Susan. And that's the first time that I actually had met her. Now, normally we kind of meet relatives for an hour, and that tends to be long enough for people, doesn't it? It certainly does. Yeah. yeah. But after about two and a half hours, <laughs> <laughs> that was about two and a half hours. Um, that we'd spent talking um, before Susan and uh, Alexander had to go and catch their train. And they had talked for with us for so long that they got to meet Donald. Yes. Uh, my school friend. It was good to meet him. Who had, I noticed, was flying out of Berlin on Thursday and asked him where he was going and he was coming to London. So he had arranged to meet us at the same place in the afternoon. Mm. Liverpool Street Station was very busy with us talking and meeting up with people. So it was absolutely fantastic. Some of you will recognise that Donald shows up from time to time and in our meeting here. And it was lovely to be able to spend that time and just find out how things were going. You'll remember that Donald and I lost our other very close friend, Kenneth. And we just want to keep an eye out for each other, make mm. sure that we're all right. So it was a, a real, yeah, a really good time. And thankfully, um, Alexander and Susan had to really go for their train quickly. And Donald wasn't able to tell too many stories about me in that short space yeah. of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, folks, there is a problem tonight because of weather everywhere else, OK? Um, quite a few of you are saying it's cutting out for a few seconds. Uh-huh. We will just keep going. Um, yep. There's no thunder and lightning here, but there could be somewhere near where you are and that could be the problem. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we're just going to keep going. Anyway, yes. um, something else. What else did we have? I loved um, the worship time and the, and the worship in the morning. We had prayers every morning um, and, and the worship and just the whole music experience. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, one or two people have asked how I managed to keep quiet for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> they actually gave us two separate they rooms. They did, so I wasn't tempted. And I didn't even go on social media in that hour. No. <laughs> no, no social media, no nothing in that hour. <laughs> we were in two separate rooms for that hour and uh, that worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me too. It, it worked for me too. Yeah, yeah. That, that was one of my real blessings. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love the worship and the worship songs. And just when, when I'm very good at putting a mask on um, I, and and making sure 
and everything is okay. Do you know what I mean? But when I go to worship somewhere where I'm, I'm not on the platform, I just cry all the time. <laughs> and Bruce just lets me do it. Yep. <laughs> um, and some of the worship songs, and I was really, really blessed, and just the whole teaching thing, and the moments of grace, as you yeah, say. Well, yeah, okay. we've, we've dealt with a, a lot of really big things in the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's been an ongoing thing. So I think it was a, a very a very useful time for us to be away and to be able to allow ourselves to think about those things and not pretend that yeah. we were in control of everything yeah. and just be vulnerable yeah. for that time. Yeah. It was yeah, very... Yeah. And, and bearing in mind that helpful. we went just right after Linda's funeral. Um, we, we, we missed the first day um, because of, of that, obviously because of that. Um, and uh, we did email and say, you know, this is what's happened and we still do want to come. So we kind of missed a morning of teaching, but we got all the notes and things that we can catch up on stuff to go back mm -hmm. and do other reading because it will be an ongoing, an ongoing experience for us. So to have that space and to allow myself to, to grieve, and I'm still grieving, um, but just to allow myself to have that, that um, time where... You know, if, if I couldn't cope with things, I could go away mm. and it was fine. Uh, and that was really good. And to have good friends on the faculty was even better. So that was Indeed. good. Yeah. 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 One of the things that, that I really enjoyed as well was the fact that we this time we had um, overseas <clears throat> overseas officers. Yeah. As well, there were four. And one who'd, who'd just returned. Yes. So there was yes. an, an American officer... Um, there was a one from the Netherlands, one from Switzerland, one from Switzerland, one from Korea, one from South Korea. Yes, and and one who just returned, one who from, just returned from Papua New Guinea. Yes, yes. So they brought something extra into that mix, yes. and we were able to to learn more of their different style of worship, um, see their different views on things. I. It, as well for me, I think that the whole looking at the Salvation Army as a holiness movement um, and s reminding myself again of where all of that came from uh, and how actually things are not set in stone um, going forward because the, there's a, been a, a, an ongoing um, consideration of whether it was a once experience, a crisis experience or whether it was an ongoing thing or whether it could be both. Yeah. So that was really interesting to, to listen to that, to hear the arguments about it, and actually to know that personal experience is really what's going to be the thing that matters in your life. Yes, yeah. Mm. And, and I had to learn to speak really slowly because these foreign cadets had no idea what they I was saying. Officers. Officer. officer, not even <laughs> cadets, officers didn't know what I was saying. Um, what was that? <laughs> I think the Swiss guy, I think he just totally he despaired. Gave he gave up. <laughs> um, and the Dutch guy said, where does she come from? Yes. <laughs> so, um, but he persevered and we had some good conversations with him. We did. And yes. it was really, really good. Um, yeah. And he'd even been to Inverness. He had. Yes, he yeah. had. So that was even good. May says, well done. You need a trophy. Who was the leader? Um, we had, it was Lieutenant Colonels um, Jane Roberts and Jonathan Roberts. Yes. And Captain, when, is she a captain still? Or is she a major? Wendy Stanbury, who's on college staff. And then we had Majors Robert and Rita Pierce. So Doris was just asking who the leaders were for our Wrangell Institute. And so there we go. James Lloyd was the American James Lloyd officer. was the American officer. So someone that you know. Yes. <laughs> There we are. So we had a, a fantastic time there. Um, it was at the right time for us, I think. Um, very, very helpful. Gave us time to reflect, um, time to catch up with friends and time to look at God's word and holiness and yeah. to reset for going forward, I yes. think, as well. That really helped. It did. And I didn't do any sunbathing because it was far too hot. Far too hot. Some of you may have seen a, a photograph that I put on Facebook. I wasn't on social media a lot, but I did post a, a, a picture and said, I'm watching the world go by 
and that was um, we had free free time every day just for an hour after lunch before the silent hour and we always tried to go down into the village and we had a walk along the river and sat for a few moments and that's exactly what we did watched mm. the world go by it was lovely so it was very good yes so, so shall we carry on yes continue anyway Song oh, number. I'm playing this one. Yes, song number <laughs> 756. I think we've got a couple of clips again. Yeah. Song 756. He walks with God who speaks to God in prayer and daily brings to him his daily care. Possessing inward peace, he truly knows a heart's refreshment and a soul's repose. <laughs> He walks with God, who speaks to God in prayer, and daily brings to him his daily care, possessing in what is the truly songs of praise so please put in the comments the songs that you'd like us to sing our scripture reading this evening we've got two portions of scripture Genesis chapter 5 um, and we're commencing at verse 21 this might appear to be a strange scripture reading to you, but it will all become evident when Bruce shares with us later. Genesis 5 and 21. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years, walking in close fellowship with God, then one day he disappeared because God took him. When Methuselah was 187 years old, he became the father of Lamech. After the birth of Lamech, Methuselah lived another 782 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Methuselah lived 969 years, and then he died. When Lamech was 182 years old, he became the father of a son. Lamech named his son Noah, for he said, May he bring us relief from our work and the painful labour of farming this ground that the Lord has cursed. After the birth of Noah, Lamech lived another 595 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Lamech lived 777 years, and then he died. And then just over to Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 5 and 6. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying, 
He disappeared because God took him, for before he was taken up he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Amen. We're going to sing again song number 690, 690. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. To trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a dust nor a fear, not a sign nor a tear can abide while we trust. Mm-hmm. be here before um, and he decided that 
he would quite like to do that when he was still able to do it. So that was a very memorable walk, going on the boat, uh -huh. getting the wee minibus over to Ratwick, because I don't think he would have managed the walk to Ratwick and up the hill. Um, got dropped off at Ratwick and we walked up and we had a picnic at the top. Mm -hmm. Dad was feeding a seagull. Remember the seagull kept coming? Oh, yes, he had a pal. <laughs> he had, he a, had a, pal. a pal and then walked all the way back down. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those days, it wasn't bright sunshine, it was just a, a kind of what I would call smelly rain, which is like a kind of drizzly very kind of rain, rain, very yeah. fine rain, which just made it nice and cool and refreshing. And what made it even more special for Dad was that the Hamnivo, the boat, passed. So he got his picture of the Hamnivo. Yeah. If he was only going to go once, then the boat had to go <laughs> had past. To go. Definitely. And he had to get a photo Definitely. of it. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Hey, one of the things that we talked about last week, meeting up with David and Denise, was the fact that we had been almost unofficial college chaperones. Yes. When we were there. Any couple that sort of met up when we were at college, it seemed we were the ones who would go out with them to make sure that they behaved themselves hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, David and I were having a good laugh, um, remembering coming back up um, towards the college, uh, coming up Denmark Hill, there were a series of bollards at the side of the road to protect, protect pedestrians from the traffic. And being young and foolish as we were, now that we're old and foolish, <laughs> we still would have tried it. But yes. being young and foolish that we were then, the pair of us leapfrogged all of these bollards <laughs> going up towards the yeah. college at Denmark Hill. And, uh, and Denise and I were having a laugh. Of course you were. <laughs> the, the, it worked. The ladies were impressed. They both married us. And the marriages have lasted. Absolutely. So, quite clearly, it's the thing to do. If there's any young lads watching, listening tonight, and you're not quite sure how to win a woman's heart, <laughs> find a series of bollards and be able to leapfrog them with a friend. He, d he, he was going to... Th so there was these lights in the grass, but he decided that they were too sugarly. Well, there the, the were kind of bollards at the yeah. side of the, the, the grass yeah. at, at the, co at the um, somebody court yeah, yeah. but they were definitely too shugly and I think that was a blessing in disguise from the Lord Absolutely. Um, because I don't think my hip would, <laughs> <laughs> would have lasted and but David himself so. still I don't think has come to terms with his slowest park, park run, run time ever that he recorded when um, we were at somebody court he, on the Saturday he went on the park run and he reckons he probably did three laps instead of two. Yes, he his, thinks so. <laughs> his time was so slow. He did mention that there was a 95-year-old man who did the park run as well. And at, at which point I commented, and David almost caught up with him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Poor, poor, poor David. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So any other walks? Yeah. Mind that time I walked up the bin hill. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we go along that way now. Do you mind the time we walked up there? Oh, we walked straight from the house in Mid Street, right? Oh, of course. Of course we did. Um, and we're walking along, had our lunch with us. Um, and I kept saying the news, we must be getting to the top. It's just round this the corner. corner. It's just round this corner. And then we get round the corner. It's just round the next corner. <laughs> and I kept saying to him, are you sure about that? Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. It was worth the walk because the, the views the from views the top, are fantastic, absolutely beautiful, and it, it was it was a toss up between going there or or walking to Speedy, which I started to think maybe we should have just walked to Speedy, but, but we could go back and do Speedy any time really, couldn't yes. we? Um, to go up the bin hill, and then I, I but I'm sure there's there's a bit that you can go that it's not such a strenuous walk. There is another of bit, there is. so maybe we'll do that <laughs> the next time. Of course. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, the view, I mean, it was worth it. The view was spectacular, right over the Murray Coast and, and all the, like, Bucky, Fenefty, Cullen, Port Rocky Cullen. I don't know if we could see quite as far as Port Soy, probably could. But just to be able to be up there and just to, to look, and it was a very hot day. Yeah. Yeah. I think back to the, the time when um, I caught on to the the um, St Magnus Way walk. Yes. Um, I'm not quite sure what, what you were doing. You were going back to Kirkwall, weren't you? You dropped me off. I dropped you off. 
Um, oh, I was going to Stromness. Well, you're going to Stromness. You ended up in Kirkball moment. because I, I got to Kirkball on the bus. That's right. Um, and uh, St Magnus Way had just been opened and there were a whole load of uh, Catholic bishops and archbishops in Orkney at the yeah. time to commemorate the St Magnus's martyrdom. And um, as part of that, they were walking part of the St Magnus Way, or yeah, I think it was just part of it. And I, I was able to join in. Um, they had obviously changed the starting point from what was advertised, so I kept walking until I could actually see uh, where they were. The, the good thing is, with Orkney, either you start walking and keep the sea on your left or on your right. And this occasion, it was keep the sea on your right and you're going to catch up with them, hopefully, or at least see them in the distance. And uh, I did catch up with them and uh, was able to, to join in and able to have conversation with some of the other people who were doing that walk. And of course, it was parts of Orkney that I had never actually walked um, at that point. So it was good to catch up and then to have something to eat at um, Bursley Community Centre and then on the bus, on the coach, back into um, Kirkwall and able to speak to Archbishop Leo Cushley all the way back. Mm. Um, that, was, that was really good because I didn't know him at that point. Um, I knew another couple of the, the bishop, archbishops, rather, um, but I didn't know him at that point. So it was good to, to be able to spend that time yeah. as well. Yeah. Any other walks that you've done? Well, I just I just think about our first morning in Hawaii and the guy in the office asking me, did I want to go to the beach? And then telling me, you know, just go from your cottage door and follow the path. Oh, and that walk was... Wasn't just, quite the yellow brick road. Wasn't quite the yellow brick road. But just to walk from there and onto the beach, um, most of you, well, many of you, maybe not all of you will know that um, it was a miracle that I even got to Hawaii because um, I had a broken... I broke my ankle in um, the summertime at junior camp. Um, mm. And I kept... All I, was, I wasn't even worried about the fact that I'd broken the ankle. All I was worried about was... I've got a trip to Hawaii planned. Am I going to make it? <laughs> um, and I did because I got my big boot off the one week and went the next. Um, and one of the things that they, they said to me was, you need to get your toes working in the sand and that'll be good. And it was lovely just to be able to walk, get onto the beach and have a walk on. Any beach in Hawaii was fine, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, memorable walks for me. Yeah. Go to Sunset Beach and... Yeah. I, I think of... Um, walking across the Tay Road Bridge. I mean, that's that's <laughs> quite a hike across the bridge. And um, going towards Fife, you're going uphill across water. It's actually higher at the, the Fife end than it is at the Dundee mm -hmm. end. So you are actually slightly going up all the way across. Um, there used, used to be able to get up to a viewing platform um, about halfway across. Um, and have a look out there. But it's looking back at the city uh, and seeing it from a different angle. Normally, if I was heading towards Dundee across the bridge, I'd be driving. So this time I was actually able to take my time and look and see various different things as the city spread out one side and on the other uh, as I was heading towards it. To feel that the breeze, because there's always going to be a breeze there, um, to, to, to just marvel at something that, for me, had always been there. Um, I was only about seven months old when the, the road bridge opened, so I don't remember anything before that. Um, for other people, I th you know, it must still be an amazing thing to remember what it was like before the bridge was there. Um, the Fifeys were the boats connecting Dundee and Fife. They were going back and forward and... To go from that to actually just being able to cross as you please, what a release that must have been. Um, not having to wait for a certain time, not having to pay that extra to, to go on the boat. R initially, you had to pay um, to go on the bridge. Um, and remember, when you came to the Dundee end, the, the, that's where all the toll booths were. And if you were heading into Dundee, there was the plastic lemon tree at the side. And <laughs> every year, the, the people who worked on the bridge 
hung up plastic lemons on this tree and, and then they would take them off in the autumn uh, so that it looked as though they were actually seasonal plastic lemons. But yeah, I loved um, walking across the bridge to Fife. A day out and, you know, it kept me busy, kept me fit and, you know, good to be able to go with friends. Any other walks that you've done? We've done lots of walks. I can't think of any more that would be totally memorable. Walking around the village in Finetti. Yeah. But we did that every night and it was good because it, it was just relaxing and being beside the sea and meeting lots of people. But we've replaced that now. We have replaced that now. So we have a walk, two walks that we do. We park at what's called the Bucket Park, which is mm -hmm. where the caravans and that are in the sports centre, and walk one side in the river and then cross the bridge and come back out the other way via the Ness Islands. Usually having had a coffee Usually someplace. Usually had a coffee somewhere. And yes. any bits and pieces we need to do in town. And the other one we is by the canal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's, that's interesting walks that we do now. Um, as a youngster, I quite often, in summer holidays, would go with Kenneth and Donald out to the, the, the Sidlos and uh, walk down from where my mum and dad lived in Downfield, down to the dip at Strathmartin and uh, Bridgefoot, it's the other name of the village. We would go there, usually have a, a our first break there. There was even a time, mum doesn't know this now, um, <laughs> when so no now. Yeah, out, out of my friend's farm came the, the milk lorry. Um, they just filled up with milk and they gave us a lift. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us a lift to the hills. <laughs> the driver <laughs> took the three of us in the cab and off we went. But there were three of us, so, you know, and the other two were bigger than me, so, you know, they, they could protect me. <laughs> well, that was the theory anyway. Yeah. But we would go out to the hills for the day and walk up to the top of at least two of them and have something to eat while we were there. There was one time when we were chased by another group of boys, and that was kind of scary. Um, Donald had a struggle with asthma at that point and uh, that that was quite frightening but he recovered, took his buffer, took his inhaler, took and the time feet. and we got back. No mobile phones, goodness knows what else, but <laughs> um, we, we survived all of that and here to tell the tale. Absolutely. Lots of walks that we've been on and I'm sure that there are many that you've been on, sometimes very energetic walks, sometimes very quiet, sedate walks. Like, you know, if you go around gardens, it doesn't have to be a particularly energetic walk for it to be memorable. And uh, grateful that we've been able to have that opportunity. Time for another song? Yeah. Number 968. Number 968. This is a bit more energetic. Marching on in the light of God. Marching on, I am marching on, up the path that the Master trod, marching, marching on. Marching on in the light of God, marching on, I am marching on, up the path that the Master trod, marching, marching on, a road of Jesus is my Saviour, He's washed my sins away. 
songs of praise next week so if there are any songs that you'd like to request please let us know and we'll do our best to uh, include those. Now as we've said a number of times before we use the, the same scripture reading in our morning gathered worship as we do online and sometimes our thoughts are very close and sometimes they're quite different <laughs> and this evening Quite different. They're quite different, yes. <laughs> Good. I'm thinking, about, well, my, my thoughts really were about all the different occasions when people have been walking in God's presence, God's been walking in their presence, they've been walking with him. And there are a whole variety of different reactions to people. So, what about back at the beginning, in the Garden of Eden? First of all, it started off as this was a real special moment when God would come into the garden and be with Adam and Eve. It was a highlight of their day that God would be coming to see them. Until that point where they fell to temptation. When they gave in to temptation, everything changed in the cool of evening when god was walking in the garden they then went to hide because they were ashamed they were ashamed of their nakedness and as soon as they said to god that god knew god knew that they had made a mistake so that walk that encounter with God on his daily walk in the garden was a sad moment, a time of shame, a time when everything had changed. There is another instance of perhaps people being on a long walk then. The people of Israel, having gone through all that they did in Egypt, then they were allowed to leave Egypt. And Pharaoh then changed his mind as they were coming to the Red Sea. 
and the walk continued through the sea. The sea parted on either side and the people walked through on dry land. Now at that point you would think that having seen this miracle, having seen what happened to the Egyptian army when the sea closed in on them, that everything would be well. That the rest of the walk would go smoothly and that they would be returned to their promised land in no time at all. But that's not what happened. Because when Moses went out of their sight up the mountain, they fell to temptation as well. And the walk that they had lasted for 40 years. They wandered in the desert for 40 years, still with God's presence. Yes, still with God's presence. The cloud, the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. God's presence was still with them, but they no longer were going the direct route. We think of others who have been in God's presence, been able to walk with him or walk to him. We talked about Peter. Peter getting out of the boat and walking towards Jesus. And initially everything went fine. Now Peter showed faith greater than almost everyone who will be listening and watching tonight, including me. He showed the faith to get out of the boat and actually put his faith in God, listen to Jesus' word, step onto the water, despite everything that he knew telling him that he, sh he would just go straight in. He actually walked on water and then he took his eyes off Jesus. And when he took his eyes off Jesus, that was when the trouble started. And Jesus reached out his hand and helped him up and into the boat. Others who walked with Jesus walked the Emmaus Road. And they were so downcast, they couldn't believe what had happened. Their faith had really taken a massive dent because they had watched as Jesus was hung on the cross. They had seen and heard what had happened in Jerusalem. They expected Jesus to end up on a throne that week, not to end up on a cross. And as they talked with each other, their heads down, probably their eyes in full of tears, they didn't realise that they were in the presence of Jesus. They didn't realise who the third person was who had joined them. And as they walked, they were missing out initially on the real blessing that was theirs until they got to their destination and the bread was broken and their eyes were opened and Jesus vanished from their sight. They suddenly realised all the things that he'd been saying, all the things that he'd been explaining. And here we have words talking about Enoch. Not just Enoch, some people who lived to a right grand old age. He was 65 when he became the father of Methuselah and lived another 300 years. 365 years old and his son 969 years. But after 365 years of walking with God, he was no more because God took him away. And when we turn over to the, the words in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. His walk with God was so close. He intimately tried 
to follow God each and every day of his life. Now there are many, many great people in the world that we would like to be in their presence, like to spend some time with them. But God, to be in the presence of God, to recognise that you are in God's presence, to follow him so closely each and every day, that is absolutely amazing. It speaks of Enoch's faith. It speaks of the fact that he was so close to him, that God was pleased with him, so pleased that he took him to be with himself. For each one of us, there are times when it seems that we're almost on our own. It seems as though nobody cares. It seems that we don't know which way to turn, but we do not have to do that. We can be in God's presence every day. God is with us. God is close beside us. We need to make ourselves aware of his presence. Sometimes that means slowing down. Sometimes that means getting rid of all the other things that would take our attention. Sometimes it means that we just have to listen for him. Read his word. Speak to him in prayer and listen for his response. For each one of us, we can spend our lives walking with God and not realise that he's there. A whole variety of responses that I've just very briefly outlined for you this evening. But let us be people who truly are aware that we are walking with God. Let's be aware that he's with us and know that every step of the way is blessed by him. I pray that you will feel God close to you this week and that you will walk beside him. Our closing song this evening is song number 441, 441. There's a path that's sometimes thorny, there's a narrow way and straight. It is called the path of duty and it leads to heaven's gate. While we tread this path of duty, we will find our needs supplied from the river of God's mercy that is flowing close beside. There's a path that's sometimes thorny, there's a narrow way and street. It is called the path of duty, and it leads to heaven's gate. While we tread this path of duty, we will find our needs supplied from the river. That is going close beside By the pathway of duty Close the river of God's grace By the pathway of duty Close the river of God's grace Tis a blessed way and holy Tis a path of peace and joy Oh, 
for joining with us again this evening a reminder again songs of praise next week um, I know there are one or two of you who have left um, a request in the comments um, for anyone else just either give us a message or leave it in the comments um, and we will pick that up and hopefully be able to sing that for next week we're going to just light the candle and then we'll just share together in a benediction And so we pray. You are a refuge and strength from all the storms of life. Grant peace to our souls, joy in our hearts, light in our darkness. And in all things we pray, be with us each step of the way. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining with us again this week. Um, hopefully you've had a, your, your memory stirred of some special walks and some special places that you've been perhaps with some very special people. And uh, stay walking close, close to God this week. Good night. Good night. God, God bless, bless you.